Hello everybody, in this video, we're going to look at routers and redundancy with a walkthrough of code.org's activity from Unit 2, Lesson 4. Alright, let's get going. If you're just looking for review questions, please skip ahead to 925 or so. This is the stuff that we did before that we'll need to know for this lesson. So before, we learned that the internet needs to be fault tolerant and it needs to be redundant. We looked at diagrams like this, which represent the internet. We thought about grandma, and if grandma wants to go from one to two, this is the path grandma will take. So if something happened to this path, we call this a fault. Grandma would go from one to five to four to three to two. That is, she would find a redundant path to her destination. We also learned about the concept of IP addresses, which are just unique IDs. So instead of these being one, two, three, four, five, it might be something like 192.168.0.1. These addresses are 32 bits divided into 8-bit chunks. So this 192 here is an 8-bit binary number converted into decimal, and you get four of these. This is not going to be an AP exam, but it is an important concept for this activity, and it's important in computers in general. And so for this activity, we're going to put all of that together. So now I'm going to show the code.org activity, starting with the internet simulator. So here we are with the internet simulator. I'm going to have three participants. Each of us is going to have a unique IP address, and we are going to send messages to each other, and we're going to be able to look at the routers to see the messages that get sent. So here we go. So I'm going to pick my section for all three. So here are my three participants. It's really the same. They're all just me in different tabs. So to start, I'm going to add routers. I need to add a bunch of routers. I'm going to add five, five routers. And then I'm going to join. So two of us will join on router one, and the third one will join on router five. Here I am with my first tab. My IP address is 1.6. You see it over here and also over here, 1.6. This is a one in binary and this is a six in binary, so 1.6. I'm connected to router one and my second tab is also connected to router one. So if you wanted to make a real world example to try to bring this home, the router might be like an airport and so the two of us are connected near the same city. So now I'm gonna to try to send a message. I'll send a message, what is your favorite food? As we know from before, with computers, everything that you do in human needs to be translated to computer. So my word, what, each letter gets translated into a number, which then gets translated into binary. And you'll do it using a particular system. Here, code.org is using ASCII to translate from my letters to binary. And here's my W-H-A-T. Anyway, I'm going to send this now. And at this point, I'm going to point out this tab here, the router tab. And I'm going to click this log browser. When I do you see that this particular message was dropped. And why is that? Well, it's because I've sent it to 0.0. .0. And who is 0.0? .0? It's nobody. So that's a self-own right there. I made a mistake. Let's close that off and let's try again. So this time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to send it to my second tab. Second tab is 1.5. Uh, maybe I'll send something different this time. What is your favorite animal? So I'll send. Now I'm going to go to tab two. And now you see this message is received right here. What is your favorite animal? And it works. I'm sending messages to another person. So now let's reply. I don't want to make the same mistake as before and send the message to nobody. So I'm going to change my two and it'll go to 1.6. I like spider monkeys. Again, a message is translated from human to computer, from letters and words to binary. So I will send that off. Go back to tab one. And you see I've received this message. I like spider monkeys. So everything works. And actually just to be sure, I'm going to click log browser to see the browser logs. So here's my message that I sent from tab one. What is your favorite animal? And here's the reply that I got. I like spider monkeys. It shows it's from 1.5 going to 1.6. Now let's go to tab three. So tab three is on router five. And the IP address is 5.12. So router three has not had any messages yet. I'll go to the router. I'll go to the browser logs. Nothing on my router. Now I'm going to show all routers. So this is something that you can do. In seeing the messages on the other routers, tab 3 sees that 1.5 and 1.6 are there. So tab 3 wants to get in on the action, and it sends a message. So it says 1.5. So it sends that message to tab 2, which is 1.5. And you see the message here is received. What kind of animal likes to go swimming? So tab 2 will reply. Cats. Go to tab 3, and the reply is received. So this is an example of where you can send messages to different routers. So the real life analogy might be that I'm trying to make a delivery to a different city through FedEx. So one more time, let's open up the browser logs. Here I am in tab three, 512. 
And what we're looking for here is the path that my message takes. So going from five to one, it looks like it goes five, four, two, three, one. So that's the path that it took to get to one. Coming back from one to five, it looks like it took one, three, four, five. So what you should notice is that it took different paths coming and going. And this is one of the big things you need to know for the APCSP exam. The messages that you send on the internet do not always take the same path. Let me try this one more time just to see. So tab three, which is 5.12, sent this message to tab two, which is 1.5. So once again, let's look at the browser logs. So this time around, the path it takes is 5, 3, 1. And if you look before, it took 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. Now it takes 5, 3, 1. So after we do this activity, every so often, a few students in my class won't get it. So I give them an analogy, which mostly makes sense for most people. So let's think of the routers as airports and the IP addresses as you and me, folks who want to take a flight. So if I'm in Boston, and I want to go to Tokyo, the preferred route might be for me to go direct. But things can happen. Maybe that flight is full. Maybe the airplane needs repair. This would be like a fault in routing. So then we look at redundant paths, which is what we would do in routing or in air travel. So maybe I go through LA and from LA, I go to Tokyo. But it could happen that LA is not available. As we see in this 1988 Christmas documentary, maybe Nakatomi Plaza is taken over by terrorists. Okay. And we have to find another way. And in that case, we would take a different path. So to sum up the internet simulator, I hope it really brings home the point that the AP is trying to show you, which is that routing on the internet is dynamic. You won't know for sure which path your message will take in advance. With that said, I think the internet simulator exaggerates things a little bit. Your paths are not really gonna be quite as random as the internet simulator. The internet simulator is trying to make a point that these paths can change. Real life won't be quite this random, but again, the paths can change. Second thing I want to point out has to do with privacy. So you might remember we saw these router logs and you might not have thought too much about it. In reality though, your internet provider can see all of this. So this isn't just some artifact of the activity. This is real. There he is right there, Mr. Stephen Ray. So in theory, they could snoop on you all day. Your internet provider can see the messages that you send, who they go to, who they're from, and what's in them. Now, if they're encrypted, the provider will not be able to see what's in the messages, but they're still going to be able to see where they're going and where they're coming from. So if you go to some shady sites, for example, your internet provider will know. And by extension, if the government wants to know or law enforcement wants to know, they will also know as well. So you probably haven't thought about all this snooping that can happen, but it is there. All right, code.org has an understanding question. The question is basically asking for you to make an analogy between the post office and routers. Which of the following is true? A, one mail person is responsible for delivering mail from sender to receiver. We know this is not true. Remember there are multiple, multiple routers. So this one is not true. B, the mail person sometimes takes a different path. Well, we know that's true. We saw this in the activity. Your deliveries will take different paths depending on the situation. So that's definitely true. C, letters would be written on the outside of the envelope for all to read instead of letters put inside of envelopes. This is the privacy issue I just talked about. And that definitely makes it different from the real mail. When you send stuff over the internet, it is not private. So C is true. D, mail could not be delivered if a road was under construction. This is false. This is the idea of a fault and the internet is fault tolerant. So if something goes wrong, the message will get delivered via a different path. And the last question, redundancy. What are the benefits of building redundancy into the internet? What are the issues with it? In this lab and the previous labs, we've seen this already. One, if there's a fault, we can find a different path. So mail can still be delivered even if there's a mechanical problem or really any sort of problem. Mail is also going to be delivered if we have congestion. So there's a lot of mail. It's going to find a different path. And we looked at this a little bit with the airplane analogy. What are the issues with building redundancy? Well, we didn't really go over this as much. Whenever you build redundancy, it costs equipment. So you have to put a piece of equipment into place. You might have to have a person to manage that piece of equipment. You might have to lay cables under the ground in the ocean. So all of these things come with a cost and that is the downside of redundancy. Okay, practice question time. Question one, which are true? One, the internet being redundant makes it fault tolerant. Yes, this is true. This is pretty much the definition of what redundant is. Two, the path a message takes through the internet is well known and predetermined. You just did this lab. You know that this is not true. The path is going to depend on a lot of things, congestion, hardware being down, very much like air traffic or plane traffic. You can think of them kind of together or being related in how they work. So anyway, this is not true. Two is not true. Three, if a computing device responsible for routing a message fails, the internet is set up to find another path for the message. This is pretty much the definition of redundancy, and this is true. So the answer is C, one, and three.
Question 2, which is true? A. Redundancy allows internet messages to be transmitted as quickly as possible to its destination. So the thing with this question and all AP questions is that the definitions are narrowly focused. So we know that redundancy means that things work when things break and everything else is going to be a distraction. So if they talk about privacy, speed, security, that's all nonsense and mumbo jumbo. So redundancy has nothing to do with speed. So we know that this is not true. A is not true. B. Fault tolerance on the internet enables secure transmission of data on the internet. Again, fault tolerance, redundancy has to do with things working with things break and everything else is nonsense. This is not true. C. By default, without using any other protocols, internet messages will arrive in the order they are sent. So this is a little bit of a trick question. You actually don't know the answer to this until the next lesson. But if you ran into something like this, you know, you would hold on to it and check the next answer. But I'm going to tell you right now that this is not true that we need something called TCP, a protocol called TCP, uh, to make things arrive in the order that they are sent. D, an internet message may not choose the shortest path to its destination, depending on circumstances. So you just saw this in the lab, so you know it's true. The answer here is D. Practice question three, which are true? One, fault tolerance on the internet is responsible for increased internet downtime. This is not true, it's actually the exact opposite, so one is false. Two. The definition of a protocol is that the internet will keep working even when a computing device fails. This is not true. This is the definition of redundancy, not a protocol. So again, two is not true. Three, making a computing network fault tolerant is more expensive than not making that network fault tolerant. This is true. Remember that if I want to make the network fault tolerant, it usually involves buying hardware. It involves laying cable, connecting cable, and labor to make all that happen. So fault tolerant is expensive. It's needed, but it's expensive. So the answer here is three only, or B, three only. Question four, which is true? One, redundancy makes the internet fault tolerant at the cost of slowing down sending messages. This is definitely not true. If anything, you get more bandwidth, which is bits per second, the more paths you have coming into you, provided you can use them all at the same time. So anyway, one is not true. Two, if I add a routing device onto internet, messages will not use this new device unless there's an interruption in the current path. So this is not true also. From the lab itself, you saw that paths were totally random. It had nothing to do with anything. But in the real world, if you add something new, the internet's going to use this new path if it's better. So this could be maybe it's faster. Maybe the original path is congested. But anyway, it's not true. You're just going to use the original path until something bad happens. So again, this is not true. Three, redundancy helps enable privacy on the internet. So again, we go back to our basic concept. Redundancy means that it keeps on working if something breaks. And everything else is nonsense. This is everything else. It's not true. So three is false. So the answer is D, none of the above. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.